Okay, good morning. This morning we're talking about federal, state, and local governments. And I have three goals for this session. And the first goal is that at the end of the session, students will recognize that local, state, and federal governments are separate jurisdictions. The second goal is students will be able to distinguish among the three levels of government. And then the third goal is that students will appreciate the rights and responsibilities of citizens at each level. And I'll begin by looking at government with a fairly ser um, simple uh, diagram with the people at the top of a pyramid or a triangle. The second band is federal, and you can see from the picture there that it encompasses the entire country. The next band is the state, and in our case, it would be the state of Ohio pictured in that, third, that, that band. At the bottom of our diagram, we see the various local governments, county, township, and city. And of course, today, our focus is going to be on our local government because it's easiest for me to present and it's easiest for all of us to understand. So we're talking about our federal um, government as the government of the United States of America, the state government as the state of Ohio, county government, Cuyahoga County, and our municipal government, we're looking particularly at the city of Cleveland, but it could be any suburb. It could be Bedford, it could be Parma, it could be any suburb around here would be basically the same. Um, as I say, the model of government is they're fairly consistent among those um, levels of government. Each level contains three branches of government, the executive branch, legislative branch, and judicial branch. And each, offer, each has an officer in each branch that's elected by the people. With the, there's a small exception for judges, but most of the officers of each level of government are elected. And then each level of government has a civil service system through which employees of that government are selected. It's a competitively run process that is um, intended to filter out partisan party um, and special interests and have career professionals in the civil service system, no matter who is in power. Now, each of these three levels of government has founding, a founding document um, that describes and legitimizes the level of government. So at the federal level, we have the United States Constitution, and I have the ratification year of 1788. Ohio state government has as its founding document the Ohio Constitution that is dated 1803. City of Cleveland founding document is called a charter. Its, its date is 1913. And then we have the Cuyahoga County Charter, which is 2009. And um, this is kind of uh, an interesting fact about our local government is that you can see 2009 is fairly recent in memory, at least in my memory. And um, Cuyahoga County has been around a lot longer than that. What happened was in the early 2000s, Cuyahoga County government was engulfed in a huge scandal um, in, in involving corruption at the highest levels. And as a result of that, voters completely reformed the way government was delivered at the county level. And that resulted in this relatively recent charter. Um, Elected officials, again, are fairly, this is a fairly repetitive um, structure that you'll see at all three levels. In the federal level, the executive is called the president of the United States. At the legislative level, we have senators and United States representatives. And at the judicial level, we have federal judges, appeals court judges and justices of the Supreme Court. These judges are not elected. There's an appointment process or rather a nomination process that then has been ratified or affirmed at the legislative level for those judges. 
if I can just jump in with one tiny little thing about the yes. national group, and that is that the, the legislative groups, the senators and the representatives, together yes. are referred to as Congress. So when people talk about Congress, they're talking about both of those groups together. Thank you for that clarification, because that, that can be confusing. I know that kind of confused me for a long time, too. And then we'll go to the state of Ohio, and this kind of makes your point is that we have the executive that's the governor, but then at the legislative level, we actually have the same names. We have senator and state representative in this case. So when we're talking about Congress, we're talking about the federal level. So thank you for that clarification. Um, at the judicial, judicial level in our state government, we have state appeals court judge and Ohio Supreme Court Justice. These positions in the judicial section are, um, are elected. And now we come to Cuyahoga County where we have our county executive. The legislative level, we have the county council member. And at the judicial level, we have a judge of the Court of Common Pleas. And at the city of Cleveland level, we have our mayor and our legislative body is called Cleveland City Council and those people it's populated by the members of Cleveland City Council. And then our judicial branch of the city government is a Cleveland Municipal Court judge who is elected. Now jurisdiction is a kind of a interesting concept, but it's straightforward as well. Um, jurisdiction means the official power to make legal decisions and judgments. So in order for a government to act, it must have the jurisdiction over the, the subject matter that it's acting on. And this is where government kind of comes and goes and is a little bit intertwined. But every government acts on the basis of what it legislates, the, the laws that it legislates. And at the federal level, those laws are called acts. And those acts have descriptive language around them, sort of like, like the Affordable Care Act or the Civil Rights Act. Um, we know basically what the act is about because it tells us in its title. It's also attached to a number, so they're easily retrievable when you look them up. State of Ohio has, they really, those, those laws, typically are numbered as part of the Ohio Revised Code. Um, same thing in Cuyahoga County and City of Cleveland. That legislation generally is tied to a number, which is then retrievable um, by number in the body of law where you, where you would find it. Um, and again, the jurisdiction determines what government entity has the power to legislate those laws at that level. So responsibilities of our federal, state, and local governments is to serve the people. And I'm just gonna use some of those broad areas to start out with. Federal um, government has the responsibility to oversee national defense. That would be our army, our navy, our air force, our marines. Um, foreign affairs, that's interaction with global other heads of state globally, international trade, or response in a national emergency. State of Ohio generally oversees transportation within the state, education within the state, and state law enforcement. The county, again, we're getting closer to home, we know that Cuyahoga County runs a public hospital, it's called Metro Health. We have a county board of elections. We have health and human services. It runs a whole gamut of health and human services, um, uh, services that are delivered to the people who live in the county. And then the law enforcement in the county is our sheriff. The city of Cleveland, again, has a whole bunch of responsibilities to the people, but I'm naming just two of them, the safety forces, which is police and fire, public services, which again run health and vital statistics, that's where you get your birth certificates, licensing, um, 
fixing the roads, fixing the sewer system. All of these are very local level and they are services that are delivered um, at, from City Hall. But as we will note, there's a lot of overlap. Law enforcement and criminal justice is a very good example of that. You have, um, you have the FBI, um, and then it goes all the way down to your your um, your police your patrol officer within the boundaries of whatever municipality where you live, and that enforcement is different based on what laws are being enforced. Roads and bridges, um, the interstate highway system runs the entire um, country, and those highway systems are federally. Um, run, maintained, planned. Um, but then at the state level, we have state routes and the number. And we have county roads and then we have streets. And all of those are jurisdictionally overseen by the entity where they particularly are located. Um, and But they're also um, overseen at that level of government. Now there's also the education and the right to vote. And I want to look at the way those work together and overlap um, a little bit more um, with a little more detail. Now I'm going to take the right to vote from the federal on down to the local. And I'm going to begin with the United States Constitution gives citizens a right to vote. It, it grants that right to vote. But then that right to vote is overseen at the state level by the Secretary of the State of Ohio, and in conjunction with the legislature, determines um, questions of voter registration, in-person voting, and developing a vote by mail process, which we do have in this state, but it's now being um, really talked a lot about at the state level because we think we have um, need to improve it or expand it. Um, because of the, the recent pandemic. So that's all being done at the state level. Then we have our county board of election and they select in-person voting sites. They hire the employees who work at those voting sites and th they count the votes. Um, so they are very important on the ground at the local level. So you can see how these jurisdictions pass on the responsibility as you get further away from the people and closer into the people. And I'm going to look at another example of that, which is education. Um, and on this time, I'm going to go uh, local up to the to the um, broader um, reaches of the federal government. At the local level, um, we know we have school districts in just about every municipality, and that's where the teachers are hired. That's where the decisions are made as to whether there'll be a new school built or a old school building closed. And that's where um, state and state of Ohio guidelines are actually implemented um, and brought to the student. But that comes from the state of Ohio, where the number of school days that a student must be in class or the classes must be open, those um, are, are set up at the state level. Graduation requirements are set up at the state level. And at the state level, we're now making guidelines to tell school districts about what they need to do in their school district to make it safe for students to attend school in the fall. That's all being done at the state level. Then even beyond that, the U.S. Department of Education has a lot to say about um, how education is delivered and how, um, and, and I can go back to the No Child Left Behind Act where that was developed during the Bush administration. Then it was modified in the Obama administration. But what it did was it defined, re, defined requirements for students to meet at the state and local level. And it, of course, is a, a work in progress. But we see that delivery of requirements coming from the very top, the federal government, and coming all the way down through the pipeline at the at the local level. So those are how those three levels of government kind of funnel in. Um, 
I also want to bring up another aspect of government at the local level, which is our regional government services, which I think is a little bit confusing um, when we go to jurisdiction. Um, but they are very specific areas of jurisdiction that deliver very specific services. And the ones I've got here as our examples are countywide, but they transcend the municipal boundaries. They're going to RTA is going to run buses and trains through local communities because it's regionalized. The same thing with Cleveland Metropolitan Housing Authority. They are going to do their housing um, work throughout this larger geographical area that spans a greater geographical area than just the city of Cleveland. The Metro Parks, we know, we can find a park run by the Cleveland Metro Parks um, throughout our county. We can go visit the park in Brexville. We can go visit that park down at Edgewater. We can go out to, um, I don't know, um, Mill Creek. Um, and we can go there and it's, it's all governed within this regional kind of system. And it's a board of directors who are appointed at different aspects of the larger community so that it, typically the idea is to keep the authority and the decision making spread so that not one area in this geographical system is dominant that's how the appointments to these to these uh, commissions is is intended to be set up um, another kind of aspect of government at the local level now but no i Correct, corrected. It actually is at all three levels of government are just our boards of boards and commissions. This is a also kind of an area that's not talked about too much. It's not really recognized, but it is intended to allow citizens to have a very real voice in the decisions of government. Citizens are appointed to these boards um, to make recommendations, to uh, draft regulations, to have a real impact on how um, business is conducted by government in one, um, one area of expertise. At the federal level, I've given you a couple of, of examples, Civil Rights Commission and the Federal Election Commission. Again, our people are on those boards and commissions with a lot of power. And they're appointed because of their areas of expertise, but they're not elected and they are appointed and they do their work um, in a way that government would do it. But they are just regular citizens. Um, the state of Ohio has something called Ohio uh, State of Ohio Gas and Oil Commission, which has a lot of oversight. Nowadays, we're very concerned about um, pollution um, that comes out of oil and gas. That body has um, power to oversee the um, conflicts that people have when we're talking about oil and gas um, licenses in the state of Ohio. At the city of Cleveland, we have our Board of Zoning Appeals, Police Review Board. Um, these two can be very, very um, important functions of citizens at the um, board and commission level that influence how government is conducted um, again on the, on the ground. And as we know, all government is funded through taxation. And we have different means of taxation, which is all um, voted on by the people at the local level, um, actually at all levels. The, Internal Revenue Service was established for income taxes um, by the Constitution, but that is at the federal level. We know we pay income tax at the federal level. We know we pay state income tax through the state of Ohio Department of Taxation. At the county level, we have the Department of the Treasury and the county collects a lot of little taxes, um, real estate, property taxes, and sales taxes, and then there's something called a sin tax that comes up to fund very specific things. Voters have to vote on those, but um, that's imposed at the county level. City of Cleveland has its own income tax, as does a regional tax authority that is kind of a, a, an easier way to collect taxes in all these little municipalities, but they are income taxes that people pay based on where they live and work. 
So I want to talk about taxes because they taxes pay for the business of government. They pay for the people who who work for government salaries and they pay for the services that are delivered. I mean, somebody has to buy that um, cement for the for the roads. I mean, somebody has to pay for that salt um, and it's taxes that does that. So I'm talking about the census now because this is the year that we take the census and we count the people and we're you can see everywhere um, encouraging everyone to fill out those census forms because the more people who are counted that's the way the tax money is delivered and it depends upon how many people are um, are in your municipality what love what's the cutoff level of how much um, tax money and other resources are uh, apportioned to that to that level so it's really important that people fill out the census now I just kind of want to talk about public service. Um, I've been distinguishing all throughout this presentation of, of the public sector. Um, that's different than the private sector where people are working for a private corporation or business. Um, the public sector has public service in mind. It does the business of the people. And because it performs the business of the people, there are certain responsibilities placed on um, the public sector. The first of those are financial disclosure, and we were just talking about taxes. So if the municipality where you live, and let's say it's the city of Cleveland, is spending, is, is receiving money that it then spends, the people have a right to know that that money was in fact spent for the purpose it was intended. How much was spent? Who do they pay? That's all in public financial disclosure statements. And people have a right to, to find that out. And they do that through public records requests, not just financial. Any kind of um, public business is subject to a public records request where people can find out about um, how government is doing business. Open meetings is a responsibility. Any meeting of a city council, a committee of city council has to be open. And that means you have to give notice to the people that the city council is gonna meet on such and such a date at such and such a time. And then people have to be allowed to attend. And um, so they have to know when it's gonna be held. You can't just say, oh, we held that Saturday, I forgot to tell you. They have to make those notice requirements. Now, it just so happens during this pandemic, um, city councils are really scrambling to meet those requirements because they are meeting online. And that is, is been hard to figure out how you're gonna meet those requirements if you actually are going down to city council chambers and opening the doors at um, seven o'clock. Another aspect of public service is the hearing process. When different kinds of legislation is just in the stage of formation, they're just thinking about it and they've drafted some legislation but it's not yet passed, um, they will often have an open hearing process. Um, and people are invited in to tell the story that would be their story if this, um, legislation was in fact passed. And that is supposed to inform the people who make those decisions so that they aren't passing legislation which have an adverse impact that they just didn't even know about. So the hearing process is something else that is public, the government acts in public and um, it does that for a reason. So the public actually, can be informed. Yeah. Can you just give an example of a public hearing that happened recently? Uh, a couple of years ago, a gentleman named uh, Stark, he's built a couple buildings. He was responsible for Crocker Park in Westlake. He also uh, has built a couple buildings downtown. He wants to build a building across from the Gund Arena, or um, the Q, or Rocket Mortgage, whatever that it's called now. <laughs> um, and... Uh, they had a public hearing about it because he was asking for a tax break for uh, from schools. Basically, that school, uh, he, he wouldn't pay taxes for the local schools uh, on the property. 
And there was a public hearing, and a lot of people did not like that. They said, hey, if you've got the money to build this big building, you should be paying taxes to the schools, which are vital for the community. And so uh, the building still hasn't been built because he couldn't get people to agree to that plan. So those hearings are a way for us to share our voices. And if you're not happy about something, that is a great way to let your representatives know what you care about. Because they, they were getting ready to, to give him the tax breaks until a whole bunch of people showed up at those hearings and said, we are not happy about this. Very good. Very good example. That, and, and that's that is um, uh, something that the people have the power, the power to do if they if they know about it and exercise it. And that's my next and, and final frame goes into into that. Um, Certainly, citizens have responsibilities within this framework because we've talked about how um, the public's business is has to be known. People have to know how their business is being conducted by the people that they um, elected to perform these services for them. So voting is at the top of the list. Um, we have to, if we don't like the way um, somebody who is in office is behaving or um, legislating or doing whatever they're supposed to do, uh, we, we vote them out. Um, jury service is another um, example of, of, of public a citizen responsibility is to actually, um, they are called to jury service and to actually perform that service as they are able. Service on boards and commissions. I talked about that. And some of those commissions are, are very high level commissions, no question about it. But there are some boards and commissions at a local level of your, um, your city that um, often are looking for members to, um, to come to meetings and have input. And so that is an area where um, people can be active at their very local level. And then finally, as we just discussed, um, comment at public meetings is, is so important. The hearing process is one of them, but um, public meetings frequently, um, RTA does, for instance, it just pops into my mind, RTA um, has a public comment section where writers and anybody, frankly, can come to the microphone and say, um, I'm concerned about the health situation on the buses. Um, I don't feel like I'm protected when I'm writing. And come to the microphone and tell the board, which is sitting right there, how you feel when you're riding a public bus. City of Cleveland famously has no public comment section, just for whatever, I just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, but many, many other public meetings do. Um, so that is my presentation. Do you have any comment mm -hmm. or any question? <laughs> no. Anything? Great class, though. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I, um, I'm glad you came, and I, uh, I hope you um, got something out of it. Thank you.